Hello there. I'm John. I'm co-founder of Fab Materials, and I am here today. Oh, there we go. I'm here today to tell you about how our next generation MDF can address two huge global problems: deforestation and textile waste. Now, every 10 seconds, we lose an area of forest the size of a football pitch, in part due to a lack of sustainable timber. And every second, we dump a garbage truck of textile waste. And this is because it can't be easily recycled. In the time you're sitting here today, that's enough to fill this lecture theatre to the brim 10 times over. And this isn't just a problem for the natural world. This is a problem for industry. The MDF industry is under intense pressure to use recycled content in its materials. And on the textiles side, we're seeing brands and legislators working together to increase the rates of textile waste collection. And this is great, but once it's all mixed together, it's currently nearly impossible to recycle. And this is where Fab Materials comes in. We take waste textiles that are destined for landfill or for incineration, and we convert them into a wood fibre substitute that can be used as a drop-in replacement by the MDF industry. Now, MDF is ubiquitous in modern life. It's all around you in your homes, and critically, it's made from virgin timber. So every tonne of textile waste that we recycle into board saves a tonne of virgin timber. And our solution works for all our stakeholders. The textile collectors who supply us have a fraction that they simply can't recycle. The MDF manufacturers are under pressure from their customers to make board with recycled content. And the furniture manufacturers have all made recycled content pledges that they can't meet using a material that's made purely from virgin timber. So the MDF market is huge. Initially, we're targeting MDF furniture in the UK and in Europe, and that's five billion. But our technology is applicable to the whole industry, which is valued at 60 billion globally. Now, as a team, we have over 60 years' experience in the approaches needed to commercialize this. I have spent my life introducing new technologies and processes to industry, and I'm a former experienced materials founder. Siddhartha is our operations guru, as well as being our materials expert, and Hannah is our B2B sales mastermind and textiles founder. Now, we've had huge traction. We've secured worldwide exclusive access to the underlying IP. We have made performing prototype MDF boards. We've won an award from Fashion District, and we've received Innovate UK funding. And everyone we speak to is ready to go. How much do you want? We'll send it to you for free. It's what every textile sorter we have spoken to has said to us. Every MDF manufacturer we've approached has said, send us your fibers and we'll run trials. And hot off the press, we've had the option to run our process on one of Europe's top MDF and furniture manufacturers' pilot lines. And we want to be ready to capitalize on this. We're raising 500K so we can bring on a full-time technical and business development team, so we can take our current Innovate UK project and turn that into a full-scale pilot with a top MDF manufacturer and to build out our network of customers and suppliers internationally. Now, our ask to you today is for introductions to angels and investors who can join us on this journey and help make textile waste history. Thank you. the floor for questions um, and once again just a reminder please do scan the QR code that you see on the screen now to submit your questions and um, John we'll start with one about how much textile waste mm -hmm. is generated compared to the demand for MDF okay well the beauty of this and one of the things that drew us to this idea is that the two are almost perfectly matched so the UK 
generates about one and a half million tons of textile waste. And that's the same as the amount of MDF it uses. Um, the EU is about 12 million tons, both of MDF and of textile waste. And globally, there's around 100 million tons of textile waste and a similar quantity of tons of MDF. So it's perfectly matched. A question from the audience uh, asking if the prototypes are 30% textile, where mm. is the other 70% coming from at the moment? Okay, so at the moment, the other 70, the other 60% comes from wood. There's some adhesive in there as well. So we currently are a drop-in replacement for MDF into existing facilities, and 30% is enough to make a really significant impact. In our next project, we're targeting 50%, and we're going to gradually, gradually ratchet that up. Uh, another question asks, can you tell us more about your business model? Okay, so our, our long-term business model is licensing. In the short term, we're going to build a first-of-a-kind facility, and this will let us capture the IP that we discover on scale-up of the process. And it will also let us start to secure those long-term supply agreements with the textile waste sorters. But ultimately, once we've protected ourselves, we're looking at a licensing model. Thank you. Um, end of life. Can it be recycled? Where, what uh, plans do you have to do that? So that, that's a great question. So MDF is currently rarely recycled, but it is recyclable. The industry is pushing um, initiatives forward to recycle it. So there's a company in the UK, um, Unilin in Europe, have small-scale recycling plants. And we don't break that process. Okay. Um, and uh, another question in asks how much more expensive your MDF is versus uh, wood-based. Okay, so it's less expensive. Um, so we can save manufacturers money, and that's a key part of our business model. Brilliant. Um, another question uh, from the audience asks, if IP isn't mm -hmm. held in the business, how will you secure long-term ownership of the process? Okay, so we have a worldwide exclusive license to the underlying IP, and we also have an option to buy out that IP during a funding round. Um, we're also generating our own IP as we go. So we're generating a rich portfolio as we move forward. Fantastic. Um, time for another question uh, uh, around your turnaround time to produce the products versus traditional timber-based products. What is that? Oh, I've never heard <laughs> that, that question before. But I guess traditional timber probably takes around 30 years to grow. Um, we can convert textiles in 10 minutes. So, yeah, I think we would compare favourably. <laughs> <laughs> Much faster. <laughs> uh, what are other uses uh, for such textile waste and why are you better for the climate? Okay, so there's a number of, I guess, alternative technologies. And when they have a pure source of textiles, they can turn them back into new textiles. And we don't want to get in the way of that. That's brilliant. That is a sort of true circular approach. The reality is that most of the clothes you're wearing today are probably mixed materials. They'll be polycotton, maybe even with elastane in. And they can't be recycled by most other approaches. So we're taking waste that would be landfilled or incinerated and using that to save virgin timber. Um, that brings us to time. John, thank you very much indeed. Well done. Thank you.